Creators and their RAM questions. Do you go for 64 gigabytes or do you go for 128 gigabytes? Hmm? Let me uh, help you make your purchasing decision a little bit easier. Welcome back to another video. My name is Nikos. Today we're talking about 64 versus 128 gigabytes. If you're going to be upgrading your computer, buying a new computer, buying a laptop, what is best if you're a content creator and you want to know, hey, what's a more informed, educated decision? Now, there are a lot of videos out there. Everybody's giving their opinion. Everybody's doing some stats. There are some incredible information out there. And I mean, the set of information that you're going to find out there, they do have their testing in there. So do go through those and do understand what everybody's talking about. I'm giving you my experience and my like real world experience and I'm showing you what I'm experiencing, what I'm seeing so you can have a more informed decision when you purchase your kit sets and you go, hey, uh, what's the reality that I should be expecting, not the, uh, you know, the the test that everybody's doing with those fancy softwares and then at the end of the day when you run it, you don't get those extreme results. So that being said, I do... Uh, have the G skills here in my hand. These are the ones I went with more because of the stock rather than the quality. Um, I will be doing a full review on G skill and what is occurring with these stick of Rams. If I would have uh, gone back and stock was available, um, I would have stuck with the crucial ballistic that I purchased. They did overclock nicer and they didn't uh, heat up as much as these. That being said, let's take a look at the differences of the different load times in software so we can get a better understanding of how things are working. Now, in, in this set of stats, I did pull out all the sticks, and uh, you need to be aware that this 32 gigabytes is not two sticks of 16. It is just 32 gigabytes, so this would be a little bit slower than two sticks of 16 gigabytes. That being said, we are still in negligible amounts. So uh, you're looking at uh, all these different softwares from Premiere Pro, Photoshop, Lightroom, and Lightroom CC. They are literally at par, and this is uh, negligible at best. Um, again, when you're looking at two sticks versus one, the one stick will be slower. It's not dual. So you will see that um, issue arise where you're going to see faster speed with two sticks. But, um, you know, when we compare the 64 gigabytes, to the 128 of four sticks, we're just seeing the competition just be at par for most of these softwares. They're now being becoming more optimized for RAM, the different drives that exist for Gen 4, uh, X570 boards, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Now we're seeing here an example of 650 gigabytes being pulled in to uh, Premiere Pro and Premiere Pro using as much RAM as it wants. And it literally for 650 gigabytes of uh, 4K uh, files, you're seeing 29 gigabytes being used. And this is pretty much the max that you'll see uh, on average. And yes, you can see it spike. Yes, certain other uh, types of file formats, you'll see more of a pull and or less of a pull depending on what you're uh, moving with. So this is a 4K file off the Canon R. This is an example of a multi-cam function in Premiere Pro. This is three cameras. I have 725 gigabytes uh, being processed. And this does hit 92 gigabytes of the 128. You're literally seeing this uh, hit its max. This will continue through. And as it's continuing through, it will process everything and then eventually it will taper off. And the idea of this example is that the peak files are still being created because again, what Adobe will do is we'll pull everything in and then it'll start creating these peak files. That is all being taken care of in, and we see it with the RAM and then the RAM will drop off when those peak files are done. And once all of this is done, we do open up the sequence and we are operating at around 21 gigabytes. So the sweet spot really, we're looking at 21 to 24 gigabytes when we are using a, a basic timeline as we complicate the timeline, well, you're going to be using more RAM. Now, you might be asking, well, what if I've uh, processed my peak files versus not processing them and, and, and starting the multicam sequence? And this is an example, again, of a function that would work in similar manners with other functions. And we're seeing here the peak files, uh, when they're still processing, it does take a little bit more time. But at the same time, you would be spending more time for, to allow for the peak files to be created. So the idea here is that if you've pulled in things, then worked on some of the aspects of your project while peak files were being created, you would see that this, you know, less than a minute or about a minute to complete a 
uh, full multicam sequence of 725 gigabytes. Uh, with the 64 gigabytes, we're about 80 seconds and then 97 seconds for 32 gigabytes. Now, again, this is one stick. So I'm assuming this would be a lot closer to the 80 seconds when we're just doing what we do and we dump everything, start making that multicam sequence. We do see that they are pretty much at par with the exception of the 32 gigabytes. And again, I, I'm looking at it, I'm saying to myself, uh, you know, does it really matter 64 versus 128? We saw where the RAM was going and it did have 96 gigabytes. But what is the idea here? The idea is that the system is going to monitor your RAM usage and it's going to recycle through it. And it's going to look at what does it need and what is it leaving there and what can it remove while it gets stuff done and replace things. So we need to take a step back, and this is this is the the critical aspect. We need to take a step back here and look at the this, this idea that when something is in a sixty four gigabyte and is doing a big uh, a big resource pull where we saw it go up to ninety one gigabytes, it's really being efficient at ninety five seconds versus ninety nine, very efficient. And if it's working on the creating the peak files, um, like. Like, this is insane to me when you're comparing it to the peak files already being done. And this is where you look at it and you go, well, do you really need 128, right? When it comes to Premiere Pro, not the whole ecosystem that you have, but just the software. Looking at Lightroom now, we do see this project of 3,000 plus photos. So this is like... 3,000 photos just being dumped into Lightroom as we get working on something else, but there's nothing else was working with it at the time of uh, monitoring this. So we would jump up to about 57 gigabytes in Lightroom of the 128, and this would start to load. Now, at 55%, we're hitting 63 gigabytes, and then, of course, we hit our peak at 80 gigabytes. The idea here is similar where it peaks out at 60%, it stays about 80, 80 gigabytes, and then as it processes everything and it starts to create the catalog and it does this thing, eventually we will have a recycling of the RAM. Now again, as this is processing, it stays at 53 gigabytes. Um, what we do see is the disk two is moving along. This is the Windows drive. It is just doing its random reads and writes. So not a lot of action. When we look at the CPU, it is having its spikes as it's creating this catalog, as it's moving forward with everything. And we do start to see the RAM start to recycle through even further. And as we get through to the, looking at the G drive, it is still working away. And I guess this is still in and doing other things with the catalog. So we're, we're just seeing these random reads and writes off of that as well. Lastly, the GPU, again, a lot of RAMs being used, 6.5 gigabytes, uh, but the processing, insignificant. So um, this is where they say, hey, you need to get at least 10 gigabytes of RAM with the video card. I had to get the 3060 Ti. It only has eight gigabytes. And yes, I think I would see the difference based on everything that we've been uh, discussing and working on between the different video cards, the RAM, the CPU, and the hard drives. So what do I recommend? 64, 128. What is the best option for people out there? Now, I'm going to recommended in terms of what my workflow is and what my experience has been. So you can put a perspective here. We saw some of these numbers here and we looked at how things flow. In my opinion, I could get away with 64 gigabytes, no problem. I can look at it and I can say, yeah, I have those days where I'm like fully loaded and 128 comes through. But most of the time I'm looking at it and going, you know, 64 gigabytes would have been okay. And yes, I could deal with those days where it's 128 and I got I can't keep everything open. Um, that being said, if you're concerned about 64 versus 128 when you're looking at that 96 gigabyte pull, it's refreshing at 64 gigabytes. And we saw those stats, and those stats really show us how the load times are the same, how a multicam can be very similar. So there, it's really negligible in the amount of time you're spending. It, it, it is negligible, that's the bottom line. The idea here would be for you and your workflow with a lot of things open, and that's your biggest concern if you're working on many things at once. Other than that, 64 gigabytes is a great place to be, and then at that, 128 would be the next step up if you wanna spend the extra money. For me, it was another 450 bucks. That being said, the other aspect you have to think about is what are your timelines like? What are you doing within the software? Now, my examples here, were pretty big examples, but my timelines aren't super complicated. If I had more complicated timelines, then yeah, jumping up to 128 gigabytes would be 
the optimal solution. And this is why I went with it, to be honest with you, was the workflow, but it was that as well as we're getting into bigger timelines. And of course, we're getting into more uh, high-end uh, 6K and I've tested out and played around with a project with 8K. So, I mean, you're sitting there and you're going, all right, what's the future going to look like in how long uh, am I going to be keeping the computer? So for me, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, well, I need to upgrade this video card because that's going to be my next bottleneck. Now that I have the RAM, I have the CPU, and I'm going to be recycling through when the new video cards come out in the fall or winter. I'm going to be looking at it and saying, well, I need 10 gigabyte video card. That being said, I'm just putting it in perspective of my needs and what I found with these softwares. I would not recommend anything less than 64 gigabytes. So if you're looking at buying anything like a laptop, look at the idea of 64 gigabytes that your computer can upgrade to, buy it with 16 or 32 gigabytes to start, and then go buy RAM and upgrade. I'll leave that link below so that you can see how I upgraded to 32 gigabytes with my XPS 9570. And when you're looking at buying a computer, I really recommend that everybody look up all the different specs that you're going to be buying in a computer, whether it's a pre-built or if it's one that you're building, and see if all the components fit together and if that narrative makes sense for you. Make sure you do your research. Don't just ask people. Don't just go and watch one video and be like, yes, that's what I'm going to get. It, 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 you'll get stuck in a situation where you're going to be thinking about it and saying, well, what is it that I really need? And did I get what I need? And when you're doing stuff and you realize you didn't get what you need, you're going to be very upset with yourself. And I know that to be true with many people, especially people who, you know, we've been talking about these questions. That's why I'm making this video. They thought to get 128. They decided to go with 64. They got four sticks of 64. So they couldn't even upgrade to four sticks and get to 128. So now they're stuck with 64 and they're kind of like, oh man, what do I do now? So uh, put that into perspective and think about it before you make a decision. That being said, leave a comment below. What's your experience? What would you prefer? And uh, ask your question. If I can answer it, you're going to get a good answer. If not, I'll go research it and figure out the solution for you. And at the same time, um, hit the like, hit the subscribe. More videos coming your way.